I come from the other end of the spectrum. You know, you've had some very deep dive discussions around, you know, the the history of India and you know what defines humanity, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I'm a geek in the crowd, so I'm somebody who's a geek and a nerd, and that's my that's my biography. And and I'm somebody who's here to simply go ahead and talk about. I do not understand the depths or the breadths of how life works, but how technology works. And I've been fortunate to be working with multiple Fortune 500 companies across the globe to be able to see what they're doing, what what the Silicon Valleys and the Tel Avivs and the Shanghais of the world are doing, and of course what India is doing. And actually, to my pleasant surprise, over the last couple of years, we've been leapfrogging and absolutely taking a center stage and leading the way forward for a lot of countries, for a lot of companies uh, to, re- to, to, to understand things from. So, 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 so guys, uh, the whole objective of this talk is not to go ahead and talk about the, 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 the super PhDs and the, and, and the kind of depth of knowledge that the, the, the Kapils and the Ashtavakras of the country have gone ahead and given us with. The goal is not to talk about the ancient histories of the Nalandas and the Takshilas of the country. The goal is again not to talk about how a Dutch economist spoke about uh, how India was more than 35% of the world's GDP from first AD to, seven, uh, to, to, to almost 1700 AD. This was Angus Madison. The goal was again not to talk about how India produced the Srinivas Ramanujans or the Rabindranath Tagores of the world. That's all, that's all in the past. I live in today. I live in right here, right now. What's happening with India? What is that thing and what is those kinds of changes where in the society that we live in, in the dynamic society that we live in, uh, you know, you're, you're subjected to. I was talking to a journalist and this was a, you know, an interview being done by an Italian journalist and she asked me, Saket, you're somebody who are fairly well traveled across the globe and if you were given a chance to be reborn, which country would you be reborn in? I said, is that even a question that has to be India? And then I, I, and I went on to explain why India and the conclusion was, you know, to my pleasant surprise, she put me on the front front page of the Financial Times out there and 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 why because I supported that with what's happening today in India I think we spend far too much time in talking about what the past was and some bad things happened over the last couple of hundred years and just because of that we we went down the question obviously boils down to oh if you were out there and then what happened in, in, in a few hundred years where, where things went all the way? But if you really see the stats and numbers of how India today has become a leader in so many places, be it in the Mountain View, be it in Davos, be it in, be, be it in any part of the world, uh, we'll talk about stats and numbers and we'll talk about what things are. The centerpiece, and why I say this, is uh, to our Prime Minister, he calls it the Jam Yojana, where you have the Jandhan, you have the Aadhaar, and the mobile, the, the entire mobile ecosystem, how it's exploding in India. And I'll explain why I would call it exploding. But the center of the Jam is also the Aadhaar. And there's been so much misfortune of this, this, this brilliant thing, which is a revolution which has struck the entire country. And it's really, really unfortunate why most Indians themselves, forget about Americans, or, or, or people outside the country do not understand the scale and the, and the, and the enormous, the, the, the beauty of the entire system. Let's first start with understanding what fundamentally is Aadhaar. You're talking about uniquely identifying and having the unique fingerprints, the iris information, the personal information of 1.23 billion people. How much is that? Just to put to context, the entire population of the United States, the European Union, the United Kingdom put together, that is the scale of what the Aadhaar system is all about. You're talking about identifying uniquely each an individual and every ID is backed by a unique fingerprint. What that simply means is you cannot have deduplications of the individuals which are there. I'm sure all of us know that to, uh, to, to solve a problem, you need to see it first. And any c- country like, like, like India, uh, at the scale at which it operates, or even smaller countries like a Singapore or a Malaysia, are, are, have their own problems. But when you talk about a country like India, when you want to solve real issues of people on ground, there is so much. When you cannot see things, it said the uh, it, it it said that you know you're staying at you know in, in in a north block in Delhi, you're trying to solve the problems of the last 100 million people is a very very difficult connect. And even if you come out with things which are which are fairly close to what their problems 
problems are, how do you identify them? How do you demographically sort them so that you can make and fine tune your policies and decisions based on what they really require? So the first requirement a decade back is what the government started with. And remember, I'm a geek and a nerd. I do not have any leaning towards any of the sides of the parties. I am a supporter of technology. I truly believe that's something which will be transformation in elevating the, the, the overall life, life quality both quantitatively and the qualitative part, um, and that, that technology is gonna play a central role in that in the future. But coming back, why I'm saying this to you is, the scale of Aadhaar is massive, and it's only been a country like India, which has been successful in getting these 1.2 billion people and their databases. Now, this was only step one. Now, what came out from 1.2 billion people and their identities is an autom automated API-driven mechanism through which you can, as a service provider, as an individual, probe whether somebody is genuinely who he's saying he is. In other words, what that simply means is that you might be a bank, you might be a teleco provider, you might be a, any kind of a service provider. When somebody comes to you as a customer, the first thing you want to know is whether the person is really who he's saying he is. And that was the fundamental concept of KYC, know your customer. And remember, I'm pretty sure, and this was a very interesting survey that was done uh, by one of the publications in India, which says on an average, in Indian does at least 60 to 70 KYCs that he gives every five years. You're talking about eliminating all of that and eliminating the fraud and the deduplications of individuals by simply going to a kiosk, giving your fingerprint and your Aadhaar number, and boom, you are actually verified out there. There is no question of you frauding things. And if you ever think of it, the number of fake calls that you get, the fraud calls that you get, the number of times where people try to du dupe you by take saying that oh can you please transfer money from this account to that account because i'm i'm you've won a lottery etc etc the only reason they can do that today is because they've got a sim card through which they're calling which is not linked to a genuine identity and so difficult to trace them. They know that when you transfer money from your account to somebody else's account, that is again bought in by somebody's identity which is not genuine and it is so easy to do that in India. Aadhaar eliminates that in totality. The way that works and the good part is because it's technology enabled, there is no Babu sitting out there who you need to go ahead and please first to be able to get an access to the entire thing. When I say entire thing, doesn't mean that you get an access to the database. It's only API driven, means you send the parameters and Aadhaar says yes or no. So you as Airtel, where somebody's come to take a SIM card from you, simply send the fingerprint and the Aadhaar number to somebody which is, which which is, you know, which is which, uh, to, to, to UIDAI, which maintains Aadhaar, and they simply revert by saying, yes, this fingerprint belongs to this Aadhaar number. That's all that UIDAI does. There is no question of a privacy breach. There's no question of a, of, of a challenge of being providing all your details to this, and a lot of nonsensical news which comes out saying, oh, the government wants to see your phone records, the government wants to you know, see your bank you know, transactions, et cetera, et cetera. You know, most people don't realize if the government today wants to see it, they can still see it with or without Aadhaar. But Aadhaar by no means enables people to do that. And last month, there was a complete, complete shift and, you know, like I think they've taken technology implications to an absolutely new direction or a dimension by going ahead and including offline authentication. So now, I don't know if you guys know this, but now you have a QR code that you can generate which is digitally signed on your Aadhaar card. This is the new Aadhaar card which has come and I say new, don't be worried, your previous ones are still valid. Uh, but the new one basically allows somebody to simply scan a QR code and because it is using your digital signature and the digital signature is there and the QR code itself has a picture of you. The person who's scanning it would be able to see the picture, will be able to see whether you are genuinely the guy who's carrying the Aadhaar card without even touching the Aadhaar server. Mark my words when I say this, this is a technology, in the words of Bill Gates two weeks back, 
saying this is the one of the most stunning pieces of technology that he has come across and he's recommending multiple countries to go ahead and ad adopt the same unfortunately in india the only kind of debates that you see or why is aadhaar a privacy breach i remember being being one of these prime time debates where the the journalist asks me that oh can you tell me one country which has gone ahead and done in, in you know implemented a system like this and i said look we have been the absolute thought leaders out here and we are pioneers in this field and we've been able to do something which the united states will take at least a decade at least i'm saying to catch up and the, the reaction was oh come on what are you talking about we can't do that that's the unfortunate mindset that sunk in in a lot of people coming back why i mention all these things i'm a security professional i eat sleep drink talk walk with a team of a few hundred people cyber security and i can tell you after doing and looking and knowing the security stack that an aadhar uses and a google uses and a facebook uses and the paypal uses and a lot of them are my customers is is they use absolutely the same degree of authentication of of key encryption standards basically of cyber security what the global best in the world are using there's no question of going ahead and talking about a breach i'm sure you've heard of a lot of breach reports where oh this many aadhar details breach but have you ever come across one single newspaper article which says 300 crore rupees fraud has happened because the aadhar database was hacked you will never find that the problem there are apis the power of aadhar is that an external service provider can probe and then take the the, the the information whether somebody is genuine or not from the apis the result there is a service provider that can get hacked it's like 3 million applications on the google play store and one of the applications getting hacked doesn't mean the google play store got hacked on the record till date not a single biometric detail of any person has ever been hacked from the aadhar database till date So the point which I'm making again is we are living in that world where Aadhaar is really become something where which is leapfrogged its way 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 far away at a time when Amazon is trying to do contactless payments in in, in trying to to pilots in Seattle for the same out here we have true contactless payments I don't know if you know Bhim by Aadhaar where you don't need your credit card your debit card or even your mobile phones you can just walk to a Kirana store today and the Kirana store will have a mobile phone which has a two thousand rupee fingerprint. scanner and you just give your fingerprint and boom the payment happens from your savings bank account mark my words the united states is at least a decade behind from 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 getting anywhere close to this we do security for most of the large payment companies in the world so that's the kind of revolution we are talking about i hope you know some people out here can go ahead and and see and understand where things are and and actually make this as a as a thing that you know we are leapfrogging in a completely different way on how india leapfrogged its way directly to 400 million mobile phones where 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 the united states was still hung on to the laptops and the desktops so that's the advantage where we are going towards uh, i think that's that's about it that's about it thank you so much uh, thank you so much for having me here please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel for our other social media links more content and to support our work please visit citti.net dhanyawad namaskar